At the heart of every paddler beats a passion for water, competition, and conservation. This unique podcast aims to unite all the paddling styles and stories under one common heartbeat. This is The Paddler's Pulse. All right, you guys, so I get a chance to hang out here with this amazing gentleman named Brett Warner, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the eco side of paddling, which I'm pretty sure if you guys are listening to this podcast is something that you're into. I had a good, well, I thought I had a good idea of what that actually meant until I met him. Um, And he's going to tell us a little bit about his story of how he found the eco side of paddling and how he's kind of ingrained it into his life in a way that I think is super inspiring to a lot of people around him. So without further ado, I bring to you Mr. Brett Warner. All right. Well, thanks for having me, by the way. I, I've been passionate about caring for the environment, I think, ever since I was you know, a little kid in that classroom learning about global warming or climate change or whatever they called it at that point. But when I first started getting into making boards that were more eco-friendly, more sustainable boards, I got into it because it was less expensive. <laughs> um, because I wanted a $3,000 carbon fiber board and my wife said that she wasn't too cool with that at the moment. So I saw a, uh, a wooden board at the the powerhouse paddle in Del Mar. Oh, neat. One day. Yeah. And I went up to talk to them about it. They told me about how you could order this kit online from Chesapeake Lightcraft. And I went there. I did some reading. I read some books about it. Realized I could probably make it for under $1,000. And mm. thought, let's give it a shot. Sweet. It was not until the first time that I was or not, not the first time I was paddling it, but after I paddled a few times and I started going on the online forums about wood board building to look at a second board that I realized how I could make the super cool, eco-friendly wooden board on my next one. Right. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. So a lot of people listening are probably pretty, I mean, we're all very in the know and comfortable about all these really nice, colorful, you know, carbon boards and standard boards that are out there. Um, why do you think most people don't hear more about this side of it? Like you, it was a curiosity for you because you saw a wood board and you thought, wow, that's interesting. But how come it's not so much, much more mainstream? I think people are turned off by wood boards, mm. not because they look beautiful, because they do look gorgeous. When yeah, they do. Right, they look amazing. But people automatically assume they're super heavy. Uh-huh. I think a lot of people don't realize that they're hollow. Mm-hmm. I remember driving back from the lake one time by my house Stopped to get gas, and one guy came up to admire it and said, "Oh God, how do you get that to the water? It must be so heavy." Mm. You know, and I when I told him it was thirty two pounds, this was the first board I made. Right, he was amazed. You yeah, know, he just was blown away that it was hollow inside. Oh, what kind of wood is it? All these you know great questions. We sat and chatted about it for fifteen minutes. Wow. Um, and I think people see it and they just automatically think it's got to be slower than that three thousand dollar carbon fiber board that's out sure, there sure. without really giving it a chance. Um, if you add that to the fact that it takes a long time to build a wood board, a lot of hands-on time. I mean, if if like, you know, I'm during the week, I'm a teacher. Okay. 10 to 10 minutes to a half an hour every night, maybe a few hours on the weekend. Sometimes that's still going to take me about six months to finish that board. Okay. It took about that long. And so if you add to that, that the first couple of times, you're probably going to make a big mistake and have to go backwards a little bit. Right, right. Um, most mistakes are fixable. Okay. I learned that. Uh, the first board I ever made, I made two left sides. <laughs> And I sat down to, <laughs> to stitch it together because I, I made all the panels separately. Sure. And I, I, I was so excited because I was going to stitch it to the bulkheads that I had made. And I looked at it. I just, my whole body just kind of slumped down in the chair in depression. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I just made two. Well, at least you're halfway to another board. <laughs> this is true. No, I ruined the side trying to fix it. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so I just went in. I didn't even clean up after myself until the end of the day. I was so sad. I've, had, I've know, had those moments myself. It was, yeah. I mean, it was totally fixable. I went back. I got another sheet of plywood, which was more than I needed. I made the a right side. And two boards later, I used that plywood anyway. Okay, cool. Good. So it was fine. Okay, so tell me, tell me a little bit more about kind of I'm gonna call it your hippie heart and how and how you got to a spot. No, seriously, because I'm the same way. Um, and how you got to a spot where you um, really realized that this was a theme for your life to be a little bit more eco. Because I I think it's something that's not talked about as often in in paddling circles. Because I mean, it, I don't know why, but we all spend time on the water. There's some great reasons to be more of a steward to the world. How like we're like. So it, outside it didn't start of paddling. With, yeah, it didn't start with paddling, jumped. right? Okay, yeah. no, it didn't. Um, I mean, as I said, you know, and I'm glad I did, but I took everything, you know, that we learned about in elementary school science, hook, line, and sinker. I, I was, I, I learned it. I was passionate about it. And I think that was because as a kid, especially because my grandfather, who was super into Native American art, mm. 
kind of fostered this love for an interest in Native Americans when I was little. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of being connected to the world and being connected to the earth was, I don't want to say ingrained because I'm so happy it was there, like right. ingrained in a good way. Sure, sure. Um, in me that it started way back then. Maybe it went to college when I learned that I could eat less meat and make a more positive environmental impact. Right. Or when even when I was older and in you know my 20s, I was like, oh my God, I have enough money to put solar panels on my house. Sweet. You know, these, these little things all along. And that all happened, um, you know, eating better for the environment, driving less, carpooling, solar panels, um, everything I mentioned, that all happened before I ever built a board. Wow. Okay. So you, you were... You were leaning this direction almost almost as if when you found out that the option was there, you're like, this is like my jam. And that's I think that's why I was so stoked about it, too. Got it. Yeah. Um, and what happened though is I realized, oh, man, I've had a lot of plastic kayaks mm -hmm. and it had never really occurred to me, um, especially because like, I wasn't throwing them away. I was always selling them when I was done. It sure. Wasn't so like it's I was like a recycle them. of. Yeah. But at the same time, it never occurred to me that every boat that I bought new was a new plastic boat somewhere out there in production. Entry to the world, yeah. Um, and so when I realized that I wanted to do my own little part right. to stop that, that was kind of where all that meant. Oh, interesting, okay. As well. Yeah. So so you first got into, like, so so kayak, you first learned about wood kayaks, right? Or something to that extent? Did I you had, ever, oh, go ahead. That, did you ever know that was possible? Yeah, I had heard about it, you know, back when I was teaching sea kayaking. Oh, okay. And like it was kind of mentioned, there was another instructor that always said, oh, I want to build a kit one day. But I never went online to look at like it. Like I actually I, know what it was, yeah. I had never done any sort of woodshop class. Got it. Um, you know, as far as I was concerned, I'm like, well, why would I build something? We get we get 50% off on all our kayaks. <laughs> um, so I had I was never super into it, even though I thought they looked cool. Mm -hmm. um, so when I did see that wooden board that day at Del Mar, there was a little bit of resonance from that time. Sure. But it was still very, very new. I was still worried that I was going to cut my hand off if I used a circular saw. So you had you had no experience prior to making your first board. I knew nothing. Wow. I had I could barely change the battery on a drill. Wow. Before that, that's crazy. Maybe okay, a cool. Bit of an I mean, yeah, but still, I get the point. Like, I mean, you would look at this as being a pretty big task to take on. You're building a you're building a watercraft out of wood, you know, that you need to like cut and fit and glue and or whatever. Um, that's pretty intimidating to a lot of people. But what I'm hearing is for anybody listening who might be curious about this kind of thing, you know, even you and I could do it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's totally doable. I'm going to be totally honest in that I did have like a a woodworking mentor in, in my okay. father-in-law. Okay. You know, but he was awesome because he, he made me do everything. He Good. showed me how to do something. He said, okay, this is your project. Yeah. Um, but he's the one that recommended I go and I read some books on it first. Oh, great. And uh, they are out there off the top of my head. I don't remember the names, but if you look up Stitch and Glue Boat Building. Okay, so that's that's this concept. It's called Stitch and Glue. That's that the easier one. Okay, yeah, got it. That's where I would start Okay, if you don't have experience with it. I mean, it's, and you can still, like the board that I have on my car right now that I'm going to paddle later today, that's under 30 pounds, is a Stitch and Glue board. And it's really fast. Yeah, that's a prone. It is. Yeah, yeah. there's something unique about it too. It has some imagery on it. We'll tell uh, me about that. The Star Wars <laughs> pictures underneath it. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a fan, aren't you? I love, I've love. i loved all that stuff, I think, as, as long as I've been passionate about the environment. Perhaps longer. Wow. In fact, I don't think I could even tell you. I don't remember the first time I saw most of those films. That's, that's kind of cool. When I saw that, I thought to myself, um, it's neat that you can build something yourself and then make it personalized. Yeah. Right, which is different than buying a well, and that's board. yeah, because it's so easy to all that is is just cloth from a fabric store, super right. thin cloth, and the it soaks up the epoxy, and you put the fiberglass over it, and it bonds right to the board. That's so cool, and it's not like you're adding much weight. Right, tell so. me about the first board you did. So we were we were getting to that, like yeah, you, you're inspired by it, I, and then uh, what's so the next it, step? You know, I I started six months later. It was it was done. Mm. I stood on it in my pool. <laughs> Just to be safe, just yeah. to make sure, you know, I didn't want to drive up there by myself and then sink because I wanted to paddle it the first time by myself. Okay. Um, and I went out there. It was at Lake Silverwood, which is up, if you take the 15 all the way to the Cajon Pass and then cut east. Okay. You'll get to Silverwood in about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and it's one of my favorite places to paddle. By okay. Way. Yeah. So I went out there. Right for, when for, those who have, who, for those who are listening out of California, that's like SoCal area, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Drove up there, as I said, on my own. Right when they opened, I I, I drove in the gate at about six oh five in the morning. <laughs> um, it was the you were clearly excited to get this. I was. I experience was. Not I in was the pool. stoked. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
It was great. It paddled way faster than I thought it was going to. It's got kind of an interesting profile where it tapers out. So it's wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. Mm, so less, um, what is that? That's like less actual yeah, water surface. Your water line. So yeah, your wetted surface area is a little lower than you'd expect. Mm. So there's a little bit less board in the water. Got so it. it was really more of like a 28 inch water line, even though I had a 30 inch platform. Oh, understood. On. Okay. Um, but my big thing is I was so, I kept looking back behind me to see if there were air bubbles because I was worried I was going to sink. <laughs> and you think it- Did you just hug the shore? Or did you like go for No, the I went for it. I, you went for I the can gold. swim pretty well. Yeah, have okay. a leash. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, you can imagine dragging this thing. I was going to take it five back feet underwater. Me. Like <laughs> if, I, if I had to, you know, it was a lot of work. To I would out. imagine you're dedicated to that. So that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I think at about mile three or four, I realized that it was at the same height that it had been at mile, <laughs> you know, 0 0.1. Yeah. And I was good. And so I enjoyed myself for the last mile back. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it was it was super cool. And that feeling, it's one of those things that's it's simple and it's subtle. But getting out there and something that you made. Yeah. It has a, even still, even when I go out every time, there's something about just kind of taking those first few strokes as you push off into the ocean or the lake can't say the river because I don't think I take a wooden board that I made on the river but there's something special about it and it just feels pretty cool it's just a, as I said a tiny subtle thing that feels really great as you move out onto yeah, the water with that yeah I can imagine yeah but making all that stuff this was I was actually really disillusioned at one point too because I I went on these forums and I said oh I want to make the most environmentally friendly board that I can you know the most green board that I can and I'm talking to other people that made boards online and more than one person said Oh, that's a waste of your time. You're not going to make a difference in the this the carbon production in the world or something like that. So. Why are those guys on that forum? <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> I was so bummed, you know, because there's like they're just going to eco forums to trash other people who are trying to do yeah, something better. Like I guess your eco forum troll. Apparently. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but it, it really disillusioned. It was like, oh my god, I thought this would be the place where I could talk about, you know. And there's a few people who were cool. Sure, and they're sure, the sure. ones that steered me in the right direction. Good, good. Um, so they taught me about all the materials that can go into it besides just wood. Okay, tell me about that. So the process of building one and... Yeah, so I mean... So you buy it as a kit? Or, yeah. Yeah, give me the whole the whole rundown. If you're going to buy a wood board um, and you're not just going to design the whole thing yourself, which is also possible, but Pretty, a much yeah. you know, bigger what's, undertaking. What's your entry level piece? Yeah, like? I would, you know, buying a stitch and glue kit, uh, clcboats.com, which is Chesapeake Lightcraft's okay. website, have, I bet you, probably 20 to 30 different stitch and glue kits. Most of them are kayaks, uh, and they're beautiful, and they paddle really well. I've paddled some at their demo days. Cool. They also have two different stand-ups. Uh, they have a prone surf kayak, surfboards, wow. all sorts of different stuff. They're, the surfboards are strip boards. Those are a little harder. They're not stitch and glue. Okay. I have not seen a stitch and glue surfboard. I think the hard the hard rails on it might just make it not surf as well as you'd want it to. Okay. Um, but you can go there, and you can get a kit. Let's see. I believe that the stand-up paddle kits, I want to say they're around eight or 900 before shipping. Okay. And they're on the East Coast, so shipping, and then obviously that makes it a little less sustainable to ship that package across sure, the country. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but they'll also sell you plans and just a tiny little tube, and you can cut all the pieces out yourself. Okay, okay. Um, so you get this kit, of, like I'm thinking just, it's, it's wood... It's wood stand-up board Legos to some extent. And then what do you do? You yeah, got if you're going to glue your Legos together and never take them apart again, yeah. it's almost exactly That's the exactly same what it thing. is. Okay. Yeah. Um, with the like, stitch and glue, you it, let's say you get, if you get the kit, all you really have to do, you start gluing the pieces together because they're not going to send you a 12 foot 6 or a 14 foot or a whatever long box. They right. come in about 8 feet, just Sec like plywood sections. usually sure. comes okay. in 8 feet okay. sections. Um, so 8 feet or less sections you will glue those pieces together so then you have panels that you can then stitch together with one sixteenth inch copper wire. Okay. So describe to me what that looks like, like it, the process when you're putting it together. That's like one of the coolest parts. Okay, neat. Because you get your bulkheads, which on a side note, if you ever do build a stitching glue board and you build it from plans and you can order the bulkheads without having to make them, I would recommend that. Okay. <laughs> because man, making those however many bulkheads sitting there with your jigsaw or your whatever you're using it's a good pro, pro, pro tip off the off the start is to buy them pre-bulkhead yeah I, I made the first one i made i made all 11 bulkheads oh, and wow. it's super tedious and then you're sanding it down to make it fit and then they don't fit as well because they're not cnc'd sure so just as, as you said pro tip if you want to be so nice as to call me a pro then, <laughs> then yeah 
Um, but yeah, what's cool is you get, you stitch the sides. Um, you have to glue a little panel along the side so you have more gluing area for the top eventually. Mm -hmm. But once you do that and you get the sides together, you stitch them to the bulkheads. You have a couple super tiny holes that there's various ways to fill up later and it's not hard. Mm. Um, and you stitch it together and now what you're looking at is you're looking at two sides with bulkheads and you actually have something that you can look at and say, oh my gosh. It's like the shape of that's a board. That's a board. Oh, wow, right? cool. And I'm going to paddle that one day. Yeah, Because cool. that's when it really becomes real. You're like, oh. You know, the nose kind of, you'll stitch the nose together at that point mm -hmm. and it's, it's, a, it's a neat moment. Neat. Uh, and then with a stitching glue board, you'd put the bottom on. Uh, kayaks are more complex, by the way. I would imagine, that yeah. One, you, you're going to maybe take the bulkheads. Obviously, you're taking a lot of those bulkheads out, but they're there for shape at first and right, things right. like that. Um, you have the cockpit to worry about. Right. But they're still very doable. If you if you were a kayaker, you wanted to jump into that, you could still get a stitching glue board okay. done without a lot of experience. But a stand-up is easier. Yeah. The prone is actually a little harder than the sup as well. Okay. So for this, for this, it was the sup that you did first, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, after that you put the bottom on and the bottom is going to have, uh, the panels kind of come together in such a way that you do get a nice, uh, displacement hole in the front of the board. Okay. Uh, and it cuts through the water very well. I can tell you that from many, many, many miles that I've paddled nice, on the board. Nice. Nice. And then the back is more of a plating hole. Okay. And those all get stitched on as well. Once you do that, you start, uh, what's called the filleting process, which is gluing everything so it holds shape and then you can cut out all those wires oh i see okay um, and i leave the wire i leave the wires in the wood itself to plug up the hole some people want to take them all out okay that takes a lot more effort but you can if you i think that looks cool with a little shiny copper in there. So, so the wire is the stitching process at which kind of holds the whole thing together yeah uh then you go back in you glue and then if you want you can take the wires out but that's, yeah okay. well i mean you have to take some of the wires out because they're they're a little circle outside the board. Oh, I but see. Got it. You could glue, like, I guess, tack weld it and glue part of it. I see. Now. Take the wires out, then glue the rest. Or you can just glue right over the wires and just cut out what's on the outside. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I've i actually had people talk about how it kind of looks cool that they're shiny. These little brass. And they look really close. Yeah, yeah. Um, they think they're nails usually. And oh. then I nailed it together instead of using glue. Oh, yeah. It would look like a, it looks like a nail. That's right. Yeah. Um, but... You know, it's cool because it just starts for more conversation, you know, and then you love get it. to chat about it more. Yeah, love so, it. So, yeah, that's where you go. Now, the one thing with, with CLC, as far as sustainability is concerned. Tell me. They're, I think they're still very pro-sustainability, but they're selling epoxies that are still all petrochemical-based. Yeah, okay, I was going to go into the, yeah, I mean, you yeah. got you got glues and things like that. So, how um, do we make that better? There is, the one that I've used yeah, with is Entropy, Entropy Bioresin. Okay. And I don't think it's any harder than the go-to resin that a lot of other people are using. There's mass epoxies, which is kind of like your go-to, like I've never done this before, really easy to measure mm -hmm. epoxy. I went from mass to entropy on my third board. Um, and with the exception of maybe entropy smelling slightly different. Okay. And I would argue that it hardens a little bit faster. Okay. Um, again, it could have been the time of the year I was making the board too. No, Definitely. to be fair. Sure. Um, so Entropy is the brand and their bio-based yeah, epoxy is what? Like, what, how, how's it made? What's it made out of? It's, what makes something a bio-based? I don't know the answer. Oh, cool. So <laughs> yeah. we, we it's all plant, it's plant based. Okay, neat. I know that. And so it's 30%. The rest of it is the same stuff, stuff. Um, same stuff. Yeah. I, I think they deliberately might not list everything they use on their website for obvious reasons. Right. But um, we're, we're heading in a direction of better. Yeah. Yeah. 30% and so, 30 better by that mark, which yeah, I'm happy about. Yeah. Which is a lot. Um, there's also ProLink, which I haven't used. Okay. But I know that like there's a company in San Diego, Purikai. They mm -hmm. put on that race in October. Mm. Um, they're using ProLink on all their boards. And I, they, I know they swear by it. I think it's similar and it's 30 to maybe a little bit higher percent bio-based materials. Okay. You know, again, it's just like you said, it's not 100%, but we're, and, and we're moving in the right direction. Right. I know that Entropy, this is something that I saw, um, actually interview with the Starboard CEO. Oh, okay. Entropy is pushing to go more plant-based even. They're looking for other ways to do that. They're even looking for ways to have a more recyclable epoxy once it's hardened. They're mm. looking at stuff that can be dissolved with apple cider vinegar. Oh, neat. Um, so they're not done, which is cool. You know, and I think if you can go out there, and if you're passionate about it and you can go out there and support them, then it's kind of one more voice for, hey, keep, keep trying. Keep what you're trying. Doing. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing this thing. Um, that's how that machine gets bigger and better anyway. Exactly. That's how the whole thing. But yeah. So that's your main glue because that's that's with a wood board. That's what's gluing everything together. Got it. Because your filler is usually going to be like super, super fine. Um, 
sawdust. Okay. Uh, and so that's also what you use to wet out your your fiberglass as well. Okay. When you get to that stage, which you know is a whole other ballgame. Got it. Got, Got it. That. Um, yeah, and then you're also when you're building your wood board and you're in sustainability, you're in charge of the materials that you use. It's so cool. You, know, you can make sure that the wood you have was cut down sustainably. Most mm-hmm. of them are stamped with a FSC stamp that will say that it was cut sustainably. And if you're paying attention to maybe where it came from. Right. And you know that you're not buying from some clear cut forest, or you're not buying from somewhere super far away. Right. Where the, where the transportation cost alone kind yeah, of takes over. Yeah, and it defeats the, the purpose. <laughs> you, you were telling me about some of the woods that are used. Tell me about some of those. There's a lot of different ones. Your, your go-to for stitching glue, at least with Chesapeake Lightcraft, okay. is going to be Okumi plywood. Okay. Which I had never heard of before either. All right. And they're... Uh, that one, to my knowledge, is, although sustainably grown, it usually is coming all the way from Africa. Okay, so now, it's an I'll, African wood. I'll admit that I could be wrong. There might be other plantations out there, but I know when I was doing it, that's what I was told, and okay. that's what I saw online. Um, but again, it is at least grown sustainably, um, and it's you know just really, really, really strong, but pretty light. Mm-hmm. You know, it was really easy to work with when making that nose, mm-hmm. the displacement hole. Mm-hmm. I've been told that other marine plywoods, other ones that will withstand water pretty well, right. Right, even though you're epoxying everything. Sure. Um, there's one called Maranti. Yeah. And then Luan. I think they're the same thing, actually. Uh-huh. Apparently, those are incredibly hard to work with. They're still strong, and they're a little heavier, and they're like one quarter the price. Oh, wow. Okay. And I thought about going with it one time, and then in talking to people online and talking to guys at the lumber mill that really kind of knew their stuff, they're like, no, don't. Do that. Stick, stick, stick with the Akumi. Yeah, right. especially because if you build this board right, you're going to have it forever. Mm. The first one I built is six years old now, mm. and it looks pretty good. I've revarnished it a few times to yeah. make sh- for sun protection. Sure. Um, with the exception of the time that I put my knee through it, <laughs> uh, it looks great. Which could happen with just about any type of Yeah, board, that's really. no different. Yeah. You know, I went out in a, a little bit of a beach break day, and uh-huh. I got knocked off my board, and my knee landed right in the wrong spot. Um, to be fair, the guy that designed it, I, he and I had become friends. And uh, he looked at me, he's like, I've built hundreds of these. I've, I've been involved in building hundreds of these at least. And I've built, you know, tens on tens myself. I've never seen anyone do this. <laughs> he's so like, you, you are unique. Yeah, you get the first right. You know, and he wasn't trying right. to get me to buy anything because I already bought one. It wasn't yeah. like he was trying to sell me on it. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, right through uh, Carmel Beach. I've broken like four boards there. <laughs> I think so, you should probably steer clear of I grew up there. I can't. <laughs> okay, well, in that that's, case. That's like going, it's like never going home. It again. calls you to learn something yeah. every time, it sounds like. Um, that's awesome. So, okay, so we got, I understand the stitch, the stitch and glue process, um, a little bit about the materials that go in, and then you get the whole thing completed. You have, you have a shape, right, which you're probably feeling pretty badass about because you're like, I made this thing, and then you got to cover it. Yeah, and you got and, and to seal it, right? What's what's crazy about that is you get the shape, and the first, maybe even the second time you built a board, you're like, "Oh, sweet, I'm almost done." Yeah, I know that you're not, not even close. Ever. No okay. way, and that's kind of depressing when you realize, "Oh man, I need another coat." <laughs> but, oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, you put your fiberglass on, um, and that is one thing that is still. Oh, I feel like it's almost like a thorn in the side of the the green board building because there's not a lot of fiberglass out there that is eco friendly yet. Right. I mean, um, it's. It's fiber. It's manufactured fiber. Exactly. There's got to be something. Is there an there alternative? Is. What is it? Yeah. So I have not been able to use this yet because I'm trying to run through the fiberglass that I have. I've okay. only recently learned about this. But there is fiberglass out of there being made from flax. Flax so as in? Flax fiber. The plant. Yes. Okay. Um, I have talked to people who've used it. Okay. And they say that it, it works pretty easily, but it doesn't look as nice when it's finished. Okay. Like it looks... I'm trying to remember the word he used. Blotchy was too extreme of a word. Okay. But but it doesn't have a clean... It doesn't have that clean look. Clean look like yeah. a, like normal fiberglass kind of absorbs the liquid of the, exactly. the resin and stuff like that and then creates a... Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think that might make it... A, in all honesty, it might make it a little harder to work with because it might be harder to tell when the fiberglass is like completely absorbed all the epoxy. So clean, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And so... Um, as but, if, was, but if you wanted to paint it, you, could you totally wouldn't see that. It. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can All totally right. paint it. As I was saying, you know, the next board I build, I still, I think I'm going to have enough fiberglass left over for the board I've got right now and one more. Okay, cool. And then I'll try it after that, which is good because the one more is going to be for my daughter and I don't think I should experiment on it. Oh, that's, ex- that's exciting. Yeah, no, she gets a, a stock prone board pretty soon here. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, she's stoked about it. How old is she? She is eight. So, so how many, how many, this is going to be such a grand present for her. I hope yeah. she helps you build it. Oh, she will. Nice. Yeah, she helped yeah. me with my first one too. She did. You know, she, uh, Gosh, 
she was three or four during the first build. Um, and I remember it was like one of the best moments, I think. Uh, certainly one of the best building moments I've had, maybe one of the best paddling moments, which means it was probably one of the best moments ever if it's the best paddling moment. Right, right, there you go. Um, and I was you know, on the ground with my arms reaching up, stitching the board together, and she was hanging out, just handing me more pop- copper wire oh, as neat. I needed it, asking me if I needed a clamp, which I didn't, but it was okay, I took them anyway sometimes. She yeah. was making designs with the clamps to show me, and you know, <laughs> she had her little, uh, her little Home Depot apron on. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, and so, she's she's helped she's helped me um she's helped me fiberglass stuff she's actually gone out there with a squeegee and wetted stuff yeah yeah. to be totally honest i was right behind her wedding and (laughs) because it was usually not the best job right um that's okay though but the thing with her is if it's too hot she doesn't want to do it because she's got to be in long sleeves and pants to do all that stuff right right. get all sweaty in the gloves yeah um no, but she she likes being out there and she knows that she's going to spend time on the boards so she she enjoys it um I it's, a, it's such a great thing at a young age for her to get to see how this yeah. project like works and become a become a voice of it in the future. Well, yeah, and that was one of the cool things too. I remember we were down at uh, I think this made me decide that I was going to build boards forever. Was with this comment that she made. We were in La Jolla. We had just been playing in the surf. Um, I don't even know if we had my board with us or not. I just remember we, we were getting burritos, um, and this one guy was riding out of the rusty surf shop with a brand new board. I was like, ah, oh, somebody just bought a brand new board. And she looks at me and says, well, why didn't he just make his own board? Nice. And it was, that's so nice to see that it was so like a part of her already. Mm, I love it. It was so awesome. Love it. Um, you know, and, and to know that that probably meant that she was going to be out there working with me a lot. Sure. Yeah. That was, you know, one of another really excellent <laughs> moment. It's almost like she set the example for you in a way. I right? love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that's kind of what I've thought of for the rest of the time when I look at like when I get when I get jazzed about a new board design you see it in the mag it's like oh I want that like, no I can do better yeah I can make one. Oh, I love it that's so, so good. um so you've built how many now uh four so four. I'm on my fifth one right now sweet uh they're and that they're not all sub because you your other ones are prone you have a prone. I have yeah three um three subs yep and one prone got it um you know if I could convince my wife that we needed a 20 foot surf ski in the garage <laughs> There might be one of those in the future as well. Oh, well done. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure. As much as she likes other forms of paddling, I think I think it's it would be more likely just to get a few more prones. There's a guy up in Oregon who has a really cool new prone design that should be on sale soon. Oh, cool. It's uh, clear wood paddle boards. Okay. And it's a really neat. Uh, he's got a 14 foot and a stock is a little bit further down the line, but he's going to have both. Um, and what's cool about it is the lines are a little bit smoother, a little bit more rounded like a normal prone as opposed to a stitch and glue prone, which paddles really well, but it doesn't have that traditional rounded hole. Right, it's, a, it's an edge. Yeah. Whereas his, because it strips, is a really nice, cool, rounded look to it. Neat. So I know that I haven't, it's not out there yet, so I haven't gotten to paddle it, but he has really excellent designs. I've paddled a lot of his SUPs, including his unlimited wood SUP. Oh, neat. You know, 17 feet, and he'll make it various custom link or custom widths for you. Oh, wow. So you can go down to that, you know, crazy 22 inch huh. if you want. That's nuts. Um, but it paddles. I paddled his, it was a 27 inch wide, 17 foot long, oh, wow. unlimited. I got to paddle that last summer. I want to say he came in second place in the in the race that we did, the stand up to all summers race that I put on last year. Okay. So on that board? On his, yeah, on his unlimited. On his, wow. Yeah, he Sweet. was a uh, first place was, you know, a, I think some guy on an SIC okay. 24 inch carbon board. Okay. And Randy was not, I mean, he was not too far behind and he beat a lot of people on quite a few people on their carbon fiber, you know, starboard, SIC, infinity, you know, we had some good paddlers. Like That's that. awesome. That's so, to mention there's some, there's some, uh, it raises a couple eyebrows, doesn't it? Oh yeah. And creates no, some curiosity. Some great conversations. With I like that. Too. Um, um, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, so there, there are some, okay. So we, we're kind of leaning on this. We're, we're both of us are hanging from a tree right now. Very, very, very excited about the opportunity to build a wood. But there are some companies that are still doing like like there are some ways that people can engage this idea without having to build their own board. Which, by the way, I I want to I just want to recommend that anyone who's curious go do this. You know, I'm a oh, builder yeah. myself. I love to make stuff, so I can only imagine. You know, I, I've built cars and stuff. How it would feel to like get on a board. So I encourage that. However baby steps so what can people also do to kind of engage with some companies that are good for this side of kind of the eco the eco paddle warrior if you will no there are some great stuff there's great things going on with a lot of that stuff um without getting you know too crazy about the brands that are doing stuff out there i mean if you wanted to learn more about what's going on the starboard website does have a wealth of information okay um 
But I think it's a matter of first, I guess you could go to sustainablesurf.org. Okay. And they have a list of companies that are uh, what are classified as what they call eco boards. Okay. So sustainable surf eco board project. Okay. And then you go from there. Oh, that's um, awesome. How long has that been around? Pretty, it's I've only discovered it a few years ago. Oh, so fairly uh, new probably. I know their, their whole philosophy is building a more sustainable world through surfing. Not just it. making surfing more sustainable, but like kind of spreading the philosophy of sustainability. Right. But through this this board that connects us with the water. Sure, totally. Um, and they've even said, I know they were talking about getting a sup and like more paddle oriented section to that list. So that cool. way you weren't clicking on, oh, surfboards. Oh, you know, Pat, you know what you're right, looking right, for. Right. Um, they haven't yet, but when I talked to one of their their guys there, he said that was one of their their goals. That's awesome. Um, so they have, you know, for their eco board, the the level one designation is as long as it has something like entropy mm-hmm. on it, so a bio based epoxy, mm-hmm. or maybe it's predominantly a wood from a sustainably sourced lumber. Okay, just one or two things like that, then it gets the level one. Designation. Got it. Okay. Okay. Their level two, they're like a little bit more silent about. I think it's more like you have to apply and get it, and you know, there's a few of those. I think I don't know the level twos off the top of my head. I would imagine that somebody like starboard that's using so many things probably is. Okay. But I would have to double check. On okay. Cool. Um, but that would be one place to start. I mean, I love that people are just out, the company, this, this organization's out there vetting this carefully for other people to come in with a real good idea of, hey, look, this is legit. And I mean, if, if they come recommended by you, then I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, and they, I mean, they're really open about everything. Good. Um, and I, I remember just, like you said, they're really excited about getting the word out there and pushing for a lifestyle that they feel is just more compatible I love it. with being a part of nature. Um, some of the other companies like Infinity was one that I didn't know about that's on their list. Oh, cool. Um, and I think it's because they're using Entropy. Okay. Another smaller one that can lead into kind of another cool thing you can look for is Purikai, which is okay. a small San Diego based company mm-hmm. that I mentioned before. Yep. They're also using recycle, excuse me, either recycled or recyclable foam. Oh, cool. Which is okay. a whole nother. And it, I remember at first when I learned about them, I'm like, well, who cares if the foam's recyclable because it's still foam. It's still foam, and then you're not recycling it anyway. It's going to be encased in glass. Mm-hmm. You can't recycle it then. But then I realized all those extra pieces that are getting cut off and thrown away mm-hmm. oh, in yeah, non recyclable foam. Yeah, the uh, the waste that comes from making yeah. the shape. Yeah, and okay. I think I had just never thought about that. Mm. And so for me, when I made that connection, and I thought about the millions upon millions of people that are surfing in just California. Sure. And all, you know, if you have a million people, which is a hugely low estimate, but just as a number, and you're throwing away a million things of waste, uh-huh. I mean, that's it's pretty big. Unreal. You know, that really is a big impact. So they're using recyclable foam on their smaller boards. Okay. 25% of their foam is also recycled. When it gets too big, they feel that the performance is affected too much. So they're just going to recyclable foam. Oh, got it. So anything over eight feet is recyclable. Anything under eight feet is 25% recycled. A lot of it is made, when Purikai is doing stuff, is made there with Marco foam, which is an Irvine. Okay. Uh, and then I think the bigger ones, they're still coming, are coming from Mexico, okay. the bigger blanks. But, sure. And Marco foam, again, you know, you can you could, another option, and this one, I think I'd make even more of a mess if I tried this, but <laughs> you could go get a blank from Marco foam. Oh, wow. And get a, recycle, a recyclable or recycled, depending on your length blank. And you could glass that. You could go get your flax fiber and your entropy resin, and you can take it back to your garage and, uh, and go from there. I think Marco foam will even cut a design for you as well. Oh, wow. I mean, it's kind of up to them. You're not going to be customizing it. But if I'm not mistaken, they will cut out a, a you know a lawnmower shape, a sub shape, or something wow. like that as Some well. Wow, some serious options. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how you get that. I would be nervous about driving that on the top of my car. Just a blank. A yeah, blank just a blank. blank with yeah. how hard I sometimes pull those straps down. Yeah, like right. This. You just go right through the you edge know, of it. So maybe you're, you, you, would, you would need to find a, a good way to transport it. Yeah, sandwich um, it with some wood. But yeah, they're... Uh, and super friendly guys. You know, they they let me come in and when I was doing research for stuff, let me come in and take pictures and talk to them. They gave me some foam that they were going to recycle so I could show off, you know, oh, hey, look at all the waste that's happening. Right. Um, and, uh, and even after the fact, sent me some stuff when people had had questions for me after a presentation I gave. Mm-hmm. I was sent to them and I was like, oh yeah, I'll take some pictures. And he took pictures of stuff in the factory and he sent it to me so I could put it up and share with people. That's fantastic. So I mean, they're, they're, because I mean, it makes sense, right? Because they're passionate about the sustainability. Yeah, they want to, they want to, I mean, what, what I'm learning with this is you, um, you gravitate towards an idea and then you just, 
for people who are excited about it, you just grab a hold and say, yeah. hey, look, there's more. Um, mm-hmm. And I love it. So tell me more about some of the companies and some of the other things that you kind of yeah. found in this rabbit hole. Um, I think, you know, to, to stay on the whole idea of a more sustainable board that's not made out of wood. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that you can ask for when you're looking for a board. You know, maybe you don't see it on, uh, you know, the eco board project. Okay. But at the same time, you can you can ask people, and if they don't know, they don't know. But at least your the words are out there. You're educating more people. You know what what was it glass with? Was it entropy resin? Was it ProLink or was it a bio based epoxy? I think people are becoming more familiar with the terms, especially you know, sure. more companies are pushing for mm-hmm. that stuff. I mean, you have Patagonia's big push for their wetsuits to become more sustainable. So I think people are becoming more aware. What's that? Tell me that. Patagonia shifted, not shifted, I think they still have their other wetsuits too, but now that every single wetsuit they made now comes in a new material that they call Ulex, oh, Y-U-L-E-X. And that is all, it's a, a plant-based neoprene, oh, essentially. Bad, I've never heard of it. Yeah, so okay, cool. it's, it's coming from a completely sustainable forest. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the, the this is the wrong word, but the rubber trees. Sure, you know, sure. The, the yeah. rubber trees in air quotes are uh, rubber from, trees. A, from a sustainable forest. <laughs> wow. Um, and they're so they're not cutting stuff down, going crazy. And then the process itself releases, I want to say like 80% less carbon when they make the material. Oh, yeah. Um, and they are more expensive. Like they're, you can't, you're not going to get around. It's always, that. it's always going to be that way until, yeah. I mean, like, like the first, the first five iPhones ever produced, you know, I mean, like it, it's always going to be that way until the world starts to kind of shift with it. Exactly. And then the demand goes up and I mean, this is economy one-on-one. So, but what I liked about it was that's it, really wasn't, great. it wasn't just like, oh, this is our most popular wetsuit. So we're going to put it in here. Right. It was, we're going to do this in every single design. If you want just a vest to paddle your prone board in, that's fine. If you want a spring suit or just pants or whatever, right. they've got it. That's they have great. a huge line. That's great. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, on top of that here, you're talking about a company that every single thing that they sold on, on a, was it Earth Day? It wasn't Earth Day. One, uh, on Black Friday. Black Friday. Every single thing they sold on Black Friday was donated to an environmental cause. Yeah. All their profits. I mean, how cool is that? I, I would I've, love to buy from someone like that. Yeah, I think that companies like, uh, so for those of you who don't know, Yvonne Chouinard was the, the gentleman who started Patagonia. And uh, yeah, the, the things that they bring in terms of how to show, how to, how to lead the way to show the businesses how to do this stuff better has just been super inspiring to me. Um, I, mean, I dig what they're doing. Yeah. And I think you're seeing, they're not the only ones. You do see more and more of that as things are happening. So. I feel like some of those, you know, are, are becoming more, both more environmentally and even socially responsible too. Right, and you don't have to be a big mega business to do it. You can you can be a small business just making exactly. simple stuff or small stuff like sunscreen yeah. and things like that. Um, one more thing about boards though too yeah. is custom boards. I think are not completely sustainable option, but they're overlooked in there and how much they can help because if you get a custom board, you're probably going to keep it for a really long time. Right, if it's made for you. Right, you know, you're not going to evolve past that design as quickly. Right, if you really sit down and get a board that works for sure. you. Sure, and on top of that, this is not always the case. Some some people won't change what they're using to build it, but some will. You know, there are ones out there from at least as I'm putting feelers out, mm-hmm. um, where yeah, I mean, you can say, hey, would you be use Would you use a plant based epoxy? You know, would you use entropy? Like if you're if you're going to do my custom board, here's a couple guidelines to, that yeah. I would like to go into it. Um, that's fantastic. So I mean, that's out there too. Good. Um, I love the idea of making my own stuff, but I sure. totally get why somebody wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. So you've got you know your your production line ones. There's companies that are doing that, but then you have your custom ones, and you can push for a more environmentally friendly one that way. I mean, who knows? Maybe if you start a conversation with someone, it might get that spark going for them too. Right. Yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt to, to say it. I love it. They say no. Yeah, you they go say no. There. Yeah, and then you go from there. Um, those are most of the things that I found when either you're looking to buy a board, you're making your own board, um, you know, kind of the the simple one, not the simple ones, but like, I guess your big three, the, the foam or the wood, the epoxy, the fiberglass, whichever route you go, building your own or looking for stuff, those are kind of the three things you can look at. Got it. Um, but I also, and this is when I'm talking to people on the beach or wherever, try to push that you don't need to be buying a new board or building a new board to to kind of spread that care for the environment when you're out there. Sure, there's a lot of other things you can do also. Yeah, just in the just in the time spent paddling. Give me an example of yeah. that. Um, a simple one, and I think a lot of us do it anyway, but we overlook the importance of it. Is just picking up trash. Sure. Uh, you know, 
I, when I go paddle with my kids, my daughter is eight. My son is, is three and a half. Um, I only say three and a half because he'd correct me if he was here and I said he was just three. <laughs> um, and most of the time when we paddle together, it's just a trash pickup session. Got it. Uh, you know, that's so great. Though. His my son's new favorite thing to do is just to sit in the water itself, hanging off my arm while I paddle with my other arm because he doesn't want me to stand up and use the paddle. He wants to do the prone board every time. Oh wow! And he'll just pick up trash as we paddle by it, nice. and then put it on the board. And then if one arm gets tired, I just transfer over to the <laughs> Swap other. Swap them over the other. So um, that's so good. And then, uh, but for those who don't know, you know, you have this cool app, the Literati app. Yeah, it's fantastic. Where, I mean, you probably know more about it than I do. I use it. I take a picture, I tag the picture and it gets sent to a database so they can keep track of where the trash is coming from, right? Okay, yeah. So Lit- Literati is a company started by a gentleman named Jeff Kirshner. Um, and there's a TED talk out there with him and he explains it very succinctly in under 10 minutes. And I guarantee you will probably not be the same after you see it. So tell me about your experience with Literati. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I learned about it from the, the Cali Paddler website or a Cali Paddler Facebook post. Mm. And I got really jazzed about it, you know, right off the bat. Oh, cool. You know, I think for me, uh, it motivates me to maybe go a little bit extra out of the way to pick up that piece of trash that I ashamedly might not have gone to go pick up mm-hmm. at other times. You know, it made to me kind of remember that like, you know, my average pace for my paddle that day is not more important than picking up that plastic bag that's right, over there. Right. It's just like an extra reminder that, no, I paddle here every week, every day, you know, whatever time of year it is. Right, great, and, uh, great point. And so it's like, I can I can stop and I can pick it up and I can keep going, you know, just throw it maybe in the grab handle or just step on it for a little while if I'm on my sup or whatever, you know, and, and go from there. Uh, with my kids, when they're out there with me, then they're more jazz because it's a little bit more of a game too. Right. You know, it's just one more thing to do. Oh, let's take a picture of it. Right. Oh, you know, let's make sure that we you know, we upload it or send it away. Right. Um, it's one of those. It's one of those moments where um, you know our social our social media dynamic can create like you have a you have a deeper sense of responsibility to what you're seeing. Right. So you're seeing that piece of trash. You have a deeper sense of responsibility to it, and then you get a little you get a little hit of dopamine by like kind of sharing. Hey, look at this cool thing I'm doing with the world, which is totally okay if you have a little bit of ego attached to it. I think it's a good thing to have a little bit of ego attached to and to be able to show other people that this is something that has more impact than than we can imagine. I mean, it's so good. And to get kids to do it. I mean, I love that your kids do it. Like, that's so cool. Well, I think, like you said, you know, it makes me... Does it it keep track? Sorry. Do you know how many pieces, like, you've picked up through the app? It will keep track of how many times you have uploaded your pictures of trash. Oh, wow. How cool. I don't know off the top of my head how many... But still, how neat that you can, like, know that. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, So, I mean... I don't know. I'm wondering if you could keep track of like, oh, did I get more than last time? I, mean, I guess you could. I would have sure. to look at it specifically again because I've never looked at it in that way. Right. What I like too is it just like, it makes me feel like I'm doing a tiny little bit more than just picking up the trash too. Like not only am I making my favorite place to paddle cleaner, right? but I'm showing everyone else what we're doing too and may, hopefully inspiring others in the tiny, tiny oh, way. Oh, totally. It, I mean, it does exactly. Right. Um, we're going to do this right now. I'm going to I'm gonna ask everybody who's listening right now, pause this episode. Go ahead. And go get this app. It's called, uh, spell it for him. Literati. It's I, excuse me, L-I-T-T-E-R-A-T-I. Okay, so it's an app called Literati. Go get it right now. We'll give you a second. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Okay, and you're back now that you have that app, so continue. Like, you you head out almost every time and you use this. Yeah, I would I would think it's it's pretty rare when I don't use it. Um, you know, the nice thing, is there are times when I don't see trash on the lake where I paddle most right. of the time. Well, and that's probably more of the reason I don't use it okay. than otherwise. Uh, it. You know, I'm going to be totally honest in the spirit of of just being truthful. There's a guy that I paddle with who paddles a surf ski. I'm usually on my sup when I go with him because I can't keep up with him on my prone. Mm-hmm. I can't really keep up with him on my sup either. So sometimes <laughs> I, have passed, I have passed trash because I don't want to lose that little draft Okay. wave that I have on right, him. Right. Um, so I try to make up for it the next time. At least. But you're, yeah, but you're, you're carbon positive on the next route. I, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Um, I think you're always taking three steps forward if only you have one back every now and then. Yeah. And even on days like that, you can always pick stuff up at the beach if you sure. see it too when you're done or if you are taking a break, you know, or, or anything like that. Sure. Um, I'm sure if I told him that I was not picking up trash because I was trying to keep up with him, <laughs> he'd probably give me a hard time. Well, first he'd make fun of me for drafting off of him because he normally <laughs> does. And then he would stop and we'd pick up trash and yeah. be fine. Yeah. Um, so 
He'll probably find out that I, I said that actually yeah. as he listens. <laughs> what are some great? Who, I don't want to call him out. What are some, what are some <laughs> other great things besides that you've? Um, there's a lot still. You know, I mean, even if it's just the clothes you wear. We talked about Patagonia. Yeah. But maybe you're getting board shorts that are made from recycled water bottles. Um, you right. Know, like I know Cali Paddler has tons of cool stuff that sure. you can wear that's made from recycled materials. Um, I think every pair of board shorts I own now is made from recycled stuff. I had no idea that that's what my wife was buying for me. But then I looked and I was like, these feel different than normal. She's like, yeah, they're recycled. I thought you'd like them. I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. Oh, that's awesome. Um, She's awesome. She is. And so small, you know, I, I don't even think that's small because again, yes, it's a little thing, but if you're talking about it, you know, and not in a preachy or a pedantic way, but in a like, hey, look how cool this is. Right. And you show people where to get them. Right. And some of them, some of the, I have a couple pairs as well too, and they're, they're actually really nice. Like I really like the feel I of a recycled. Yeah, I do. I like them a lot. I like them better than the, I only have one pair left that's not falling apart. That's not, that's made from the, you know, what, the old school way. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah. But the I most. like, I like the, it's like that kind of like stretchy. Mm-hmm. Cool, I don't know. There's something neat about them. Yeah, they're nice. Um, Especially my bright orange and turquoise ones. Those are perfect. Those are extra special. Yes. Yeah. You can see them all across the lake. Right. Nothing says recycled like bright orange and turquoise. So, well, you know, I wanted to make sure I was seen in those shady areas. Right. Um, well done. Other stuff, though, sunblock. You know, especially yeah. stuff that's going to get in the water. Mm-hmm. You know, something that is more natural. The ones I've used, uh, Surf Screen Organics and Natty Block okay. are two that I've used. I didn't get sunburned. Right. So they're working okay. And, right, right. They're yeah, doing they're, their sunblock job, but they're all... What makes them more... Do you know what makes them better for the world, for the water? I think it's just like so many of those environmental things more natural materials, more bio-based materials that are still protecting you. I mean, you know, I, know, see, I know people who just swear by slathering coconut oil on sure, their bodies and blocking some yeah. So somewhere between that coconut oil and, and all these chemicals that are manufactured in a lab. Right. Yeah, I like both of those. I would. I mean, if somebody handed me either one, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Sweet. Um, and I have to be pretty careful. My daughter has really bad eczema, and so we can't just put any sunblock on her. Got it. And so looking through all of them, she hasn't reacted poorly to either of those before. Perfect. Wow. And like surf screen was one of those like, oh no, we're in a paddleboard race and I have no sunblock and your mom's going to be really mad at me if we drove all the way down here and I had you race for two hours with me and then you come back burned. We need to get something. And right. So we just got something at one of the booths at, I think it was a Sunday by three race. Oh, okay. And and this was, it was a surf screen organic. Oh, cool. Right on. Um, and I was kind of sold from there, you know, like coincidence, but her skin was fine. Fabulous. Neither of us got burned. Fabulous. Um, you yeah, it's know. nice to know that there's alternatives out there. Yeah. And again, I think, I, I know I said this a couple of times, but just to <clears> harp <throat> on it a tiny bit, because that's going to get in the water. You yeah. know, there's other living things that are going to swim right through your sweat slash sunscreen runoff right. that you have. Right. Sweat, <laughs> so. sweat slash sunscreen runoff. Yeah. Well, yeah. This just came to me. I know. Look, <laughs> and, you know, honestly, I also know from a uh, from a health perspective, when, you you know, your, your skin is the largest organ on on your body like you absorb so many things through it when you put really bad chemical based sunscreens or lotions or makeup or whatever on what a lot of people don't know is that goes into your into your body into your system and actually they're endocrine disruptors so they'll they'll just mess up your endocrine system so people who wear lots of unnatural sunblock a lot um, who have headaches and trouble sleeping and things like that I'd say watch out for your sunblock like get okay, get more real right get more real stuff in there yeah. so that you're not putting toxic stuff on your body. I mean, we wouldn't drink toxic stuff, right? So, exactly. Yeah, big difference. So I love that there are some companies out there that are using natural So I love yeah. that you mentioned them. And so many of the paddlers, like you said, I mean, we should be putting some block on a lot if we're paddling a lot. Right. So yeah. I hear you. Um, another one, uh, Onnit Pro, you know, the, the company that has stuff that can make your board go faster or take care of your board right. more. And, you know, you're, you're putting stuff on your board to, to speed it up a little bit. Right. All their stuff is is you know bio-based stuff that's okay if it gets into the into the water right um and makes you move a little faster so that's cool too <laughs> i know they're good um, stuff yeah they're, they're, I, as i was saying to people before like it took me a long time to use them because i just didn't think that i was a good enough paddler to deserve to use their stuff oh, wow. um which I, I whatever i mean i just i think part of it was for so long i had this wood board this first one and I really hadn't glassed the bottom very well. I was like, well, what difference is that gonna make? Oh, got it. I'm already getting this drag from where the fiberglass meets and it's kind of jagged. Right. Um, but then I tried it, I was like, oh, okay. Nice. You know, when I kind of, it's always hard because like I can't claim that I felt the difference, but in comparing times, but I also made a bit of a better paddler. But sure. at the same time, you know, 
the stuff that they have that can clean off your board sure extends the life of your board so you're not going to buy any board as soon right i, I think you, you invest more through these products to kind of hang on to it and not have to like throw it back into a landfill or whatever exactly yeah, and i point. mean you know that's that's the one hard thing because i know like we're out here and we have all these cool toys and it's kind of fun to get a new board too sure and, like i get that aspect to it right but at the same time i think when we step back and realize like how important it is to hang on to it at least from an environmental perspective you know at least that way we can make better decisions when we do get a new one or we can hang on to one longer you know in the hopes of like being a little bit more sustainable as well right love uh, it. other ones i not t- i mean i'm sure there's more out there that i'm missing right mm-hmm. you know i always try to talk to people if i see something happen it's really hard to do that and be respectful sometimes right, you know, right, I, right. yes i've gotten into arguments oh wow um it's been a long time since that's happened um that was probably back when I was, you know, a college kid who thought he was being respectful. Right. Perhaps wasn't being, right. you know, uh, but, and that's not for everyone, you know, some people aren't going to want to do that. And I totally get that. Mm-hmm. But if you're up for it, maybe, maybe you'll, maybe you'll inspire some change. Maybe you'll have a great conversation. Maybe they have no idea that they just had something fall out of their pocket. Right. You know, it's, they might be horrified right. that it happened and then really thankful that you talked to them uh, and carpooling too. Uh, you know, I think as paddlers and people, you know, I'll be honest, if I see that it's windy and I can find a way to do a downwinder all by myself, I'm going to want to do that. Right. But if you can find a way to carpool a little bit, you know, it's just that much less. Right. right. You know? um, but I get it. You know, we get jazzed about being out there. Right. It's we easy do. to kind of forget that. Um, yeah. And, you, and it's not a bad idea to have a little bit of company. Paddling with somebody else for the most part is pretty pretty cool. I like it better. Yeah, you know, I I, I like the I like being by myself sometimes, mm-hmm. but I like chatting with somebody, and it helps you know keeps you honest. If you're working out, you can push yourself harder, or right. you can relax a little bit too, right, and it's right. okay. And enjoy both parts of that. Yeah, yeah. There was one like one company I didn't mention. I know you talked about maybe putting some links up for them. Yeah, but totally. For, but yeah, for anyone listening right now, we, we've dropped a lot of names, a lot of companies, a lot of like websites. Um, we're going to make sure all that stuff is in the show notes for you guys um, at the Paddler's Pulse. So go ahead. Yeah, just one other one because um, we talked about Chesapeake Lightcraft. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned Clearwood Paddle Boards. Okay. That's if you are making a board and maybe you want to step it up and do what's called a strip build. Okay. Where you're doing strips of wood along a frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this guy just makes beautiful stuff. I mean, yes, I'm biased because... You know, he's a friend. Okay. But at the same time, you know, okay. he, his, his stuff speaks for itself if you go to the website. And mm-hmm. I've paddled all his designs, or at least most of them. They paddle really, really well. Um, and he's... Uh, Where are they just, located? He's all the way up in Oregon. Okay. But he can ship the stuff to you. Okay, and cool. you're getting... The package is pretty small because he's only going to ship the frames and the stringer. And you're going to have to mill the rest of the wood yourself. Got it, got it. Um, so as far from a sustainability perspective, it's not a very big package mm. getting moved which I think makes a little bit of difference mm-hmm. and financially makes a very big difference in what you're spending on shipping. Mm. Um, totally. And he just, uh, he just finished a prototype for a prone as well. Oh, cool. So that one's coming out soon. Uh, I just don't think he's had enough people paddle the prototype yet to feel comfortable putting it into production. Excellent. He also has some really nice surfboards and he has surf ups as well as race ups too. Cool. Sweet. Um, all sorts. I think uh, it comes out to over 14 different designs. Oh, wow. He's really, all. he's really into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think because we've talked a lot about like SUP and prone paddling right. Right, like, this this last little bit, there is um, Clearstream kayaks, which they have kayaks, right. obviously, right. but they also have two surf ski designs if somebody wanted to get. And they look difficult. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, th- these are strip like strip wood. Strip built surf skis that will be totally hollow. You actually take the frames out afterwards before you glue the top on. Oh, interesting. So you have a completely monocoque hollow board. Wow. Uh, or board, excuse me, boat. Boat, yeah. Um, I don't have a weight off the top of my head for those. I've never built one. Right. Um, I think it would it be really like cool. It sounds like pretty new as a whole, yeah. Yeah, the lines that on them are, cool. are difficult, so you're going to use a little bit more wood, a um, little bit more pieces than you would for a set. So you're going to use a little more glue, which does bring the weight up a tiny bit. Got but it. But then since it's hollow on the inside. Right, right. Um, that would make a big difference as well. And I've heard they paddle really well. I have not gotten to try one of those though. That's so I intense. can't speak to them quite as much, but right. they're also the ones that taught me about flax fiberglass just in a conversation online too. Oh, sweet. So they're, they use entropy resin as well. So they're pretty into the whole sustainably built board thing. They will build it for you if you want to, if you want to shell out enough stuff. 
See, see. They'll actually build one for you. To get a full strip wood surf ski. Custom or wow. kayaks. You or know, kayak, they have yeah. beautiful racing kayaks as well that can keep up with those surf skis too. That's so cool. So they've got some cool stuff. It's a fun site just to kind of drool over the designs a little bit as well. All of these are. Neat. So, um, you know, I gotta say, it sounds like you, I, I'm gonna say thank you. I'm gonna, I, I, wanna, I wanna just take a second to honor you and thank you for doing so much of your like own homework to be able to bring a really compressed, I mean, you've taken, you know, five years and, and we've compressed it down to 45 minutes, like, you know, so that people can get an idea of like what this, I want to call it an evolution because I'd like to see us go this route and you know, more people to kind of do this type of sustainable um, boarding, but just just to understand it. So thank you. Thank you for oh, doing so much homework. I mean, you've, you've literally like reached out to all these companies just to grab phone calls or emails to just to get deeper questions answered that you wouldn't normally find on a website or or whatever. And I think that that speaks a lot to your kind of eco warrior dedication. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I mean, but that's the thing, like that's, I never liked doing homework and I liked doing this. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, there's that passion there that I know a lot of people have too, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, it becomes something that I use, you know, hopefully in all sorts of parts of my life as like a guideline. And mm -hmm. so it was really what I have made as many phone calls if I wasn't, you know, doing the, the presentation that I did with you guys or doing this, right? maybe not. But at the same time, I'm so excited to know all this stuff and right. it makes me so much more knowledgeable about what I'm going to buy or how I'm going to talk about things and right. really just kind of add to that passion to build as many other boards as I can. Mm. Um, one thing I totally left out while I was thinking about it is used boards are really an important aspect to all of this too. Sure. You're buying a used board as opposed to a new board. If you find one that works for you, at least you're not putting a new board in production. Exactly. So. Yeah. Or supporting the, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's most of what I've got. That's awesome. Right now. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, no so problem. I want, I want people to be able to have a chance to, um, maybe reach out to you as a resource. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where can people kind of, where, where can people hook up with you and you have a race that you put on that. I do. Okay, I want to hear all about that too. Well, the, we can lead into that because okay. my email is actually the one I use for planning this race uh -huh. and it is sup to alts at gmail.com. Okay. One more time. Sup to alts and that's sup the number two a l z h at gmail.com okay and that is uh it's for alzheimer's got it hence the a l z h mm -hmm. and that's what the race is for this is the third one i've done uh we've done all different locations for all sorts of reasons that that could probably be a whole nother podcast so i'll leave those out right now sure tell me the name of the um, race is stand up to alzheimer's stand up to alzheimer's and we are holding it at lake elsinore this year cool you know to our knowledge we not, there's not been a paddle race there yet. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, and the, the brand new Elsinore Aquatic Center, uh, which is run by some awesome, awesome people, just reached out to me and we kind of started chatting about maybe doing another race. I, my summer was scheduled with such that I wasn't sure if I could pull another one off. Mm -hmm. we, we realized we could totally make it work. Great. Um, and so, yeah, 100% of our profits this year go to Alzheimer's Research. And now why is that? Uh, why is that a cause for you? This was my dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Gosh, let's see. It would have been five or six years ago now. And he passed away two years ago mm. uh, with a host of other health complications as well. But, you know, Alzheimer's was very much the driving factor in making a lot of those worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, this it, it's so hard and, and it was so it was so rough on everyone. I handled it poorly i wish i could say differently you know but i made a, a plenty of mistakes in doing it you know fortunately we were able to to still reconcile um and and be with each other at the end um this was just kind of one of the ways that at first i used to deal with it not oh. even as like a in memory of him the first one we had was when he was alive still. okay um and then after that i realized that i wanted to keep doing him because it it helped bring back all these positive memories I had of my dad. You know, nice. he's the one that taught me how to surf. He's the one that oh, taught wow. me how to kayak. Oh, wow. Um, you know, he, most of my athletic endeavors started with him. And I knew that had he been healthy enough to get out there and get on a paddleboard when it started to explode, right. it would have been something he really would have loved. That's neat. Uh, and so that was what I was doing at the time and I was into it and I thought, well, why not? Why can't, why can't we just put on a race and we'll donate this and, and I can, you know, show him and tell him about it. And he was still aware enough that he was able to be pretty stoked about the first one okay. when it happened. So okay. that was really cool. Um, and we donated to the UCSD 
uh, Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Then we had the event in San Diego. Okay. And uh, he grew up in San Diego. I went to college at UCSD. So okay. it seemed like a cool oh, first perfect. place to have it. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and uh, he was excited about that. You know, and he kind of got into the research they were doing for a little bit, which was cool because at that point, learning new stuff is, is more difficult. So mm-hmm. seeing him get excited about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And as I said, we kind of jumped around. We had one where I grew up. After that, um, a guy who I, I believe is no longer at SIC <laughs> reached out to me and we put on one together. And yeah, so here we are with one in Elsinore on July 9th. Okay, excellent. And uh, already with a handful of signups too, which is for a sub race three months off. Pre- That's, <laughs> That's pretty, pretty good. impressive, yeah. Uh, how, so how do people find out more about it? Like where can they go sign up? Paddleguru.com. Okay. Uh, and then you can just search for us on the race tab or it's like paddle guru slash races slash stand up to Alzheimer's SoCal. If you okay. can remember all that. <laughs> I was going to say that's you, Or you can just email me and I'll send you the link and the Facebook page and our website. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. Um, but yeah, it should be, you know, one thing that we were looking at is I know like Elsinore has not the best reputation with paddling. Sure. And I mean, I get it. You know, it was closed for a long time because of the algae bloom and stuff. Right. Um, but I Which, paddled there. Like, like all major, like all major lakes have some version of that at some. It's point. happened at my, uh, many lakes. Yeah. yeah. So, but they have a new aquatic center. They have a new aquatic center. Um, <clears throat> you know, the woman that runs it, Kelly Byrne. Okay. Is awesome. We paddled together a few times, and cool. she's gotten people out there. Got people signed up for lessons. She's taken people out. Oh, cool. I mean, at the moment, they don't have like a brick and mortar. You know, they just have a fleet of kayaks and sups. Cool to teach people on people can rent um you know they do have a dock still cool uh and yeah they've got a guy that can run some nature paddles as well and for people who don't really want to race we are doing a nature paddle at our race as well oh fun out there maybe in the area or you're like i don't want to race but i'd love to support this well i mean come out you know i'm gonna hustle you for some raffle tickets but otherwise i'll leave you alone yeah and you can go out and you know he's he's gonna lead people on a nature paddle uh, after both the races get off and going. Oh, that's super well. cool. I love that. That's yeah. a great That's a great concept that not many races have. If any, I don't know if I've ever heard that. That's I fantastic. have it. I mean, I've tried to do it's some different engaging. things with some of the races. We had a, a, a stand-up paddleboard slash kayak fishing derby at the first race we did. Uh, oh, uh, fun. Right on. We paired up with what was then Oceanside Dive and Kayak, and he brought some stuff down. And yeah. we had, it was only like five people, but, you know, people, uh, they were fishing off their stand-up paddles. Yeah, my brother does a lot of that. Uh, yeah. We've gone out together. In fact, I remember one time in Mission Bay, we went out fairly recently um, and got completely like fogged in, which if you're just hanging out on your sub and you're like, you know, you know you're 20 feet from shore and you're fogged in and it's like, and you're fishing, it's pretty cool actually. I can see that, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've, I've lost sight of shore because of fog before and I've both been like super entranced and terrified depending yeah. on the scenario that I was in. Yeah, it was cool. It was a good, uh, a good experience. So yeah, sub fishing is fun. I think we're, I'm going to find... I'm going to find an expert. We're going to have somebody on here talk about some of that stuff because I know that it's also big for diving and spearfishing and stuff too. So maybe we'll do that. There's a new um, one of the websites I mentioned earlier. They're coming out with a a sup fishing board wood design. Oh, neat. Oh, neat. Okay. So my brother's listening right now and I'm certain he's going to go (laughs) check that out. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think it's on their website yet, but it's clcboats.com. Just be like craft. I talked to the guy who designed them. Hopefully. Yeah. He said it was fine to talk about. Never mind. Okay. Um, And uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're coming out with that one pretty soon. Sweet. So I think he's going to show it off this summer. I'm trying to get him to come down to the race in July, but at the moment I think we're still not quite at hundred percent. Okay. But so the race sounds like a really good, um, sounds like a really good cause. Some support from SoCal is certainly going to be there. And people now know where to find you, so you better be ready because it's probably going to be a, a barrage of uh, I would curious. love that. Okay. Yeah, can, and then, yeah. you know, facebook.com slash stand up to Alzheimer's is also, you know, you can get a hold of me there and I'll answer sustainability stuff as well as, you know, Alzheimer's race questions. Fantastic. Um, you know, I, I, I would be stoked just to get to chat about it. Perfect. I love it. And thank you for being so open. These are fun things to talk about and passionate things to talk passionate about. Passionate right? things to talk about. So, yeah. That's good. Um, well, I don't. I think we. I think we did. How do you feel? I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again for coming out, Brett, Mr. Brett Warner, and uh, take us out of here. All right. I'll see you on the water. Thanks for dropping by to listen in. You, yes, you are the great people that bring paddling to life. Join us next time, and please don't keep us a secret. Like us on iTunes, share with your buddies, and keep the paddlers' pulse pumping. See you on the water. <laughs>